You know, Joshua is no doubt fearful because he has to step in the shoes of a giant for the Lord. Here's a man that spoke face to face with God as a man does his friend. Here's a man that God used in miraculous ways, even to the point of his death, when God took angels and buried Moses' body when no one could find the body of Moses. Here's a man that God used like no other man, the greatest prophet, no doubt, in all the Old Testament. And now Joshua has to lead three million people into the promised land that have been rebellious and marched around the wilderness for 40 years. Listen, they couldn't enter the promised land the first time. It was only 11 miles from Egypt to the promised land in a direct line. They couldn't enter the first time because of fear and unbelief. If they would have had faith, they would have entered into the promised land because they seen the giants, the ten spies with the evil report. They wasn't allowed to enter into the promised land. And people are gripped with fear today. Everybody you talk to, they're fearful. People with masks, people with all manners of things. And we got to use common sense. We know that. But there's a point to where people get overboard, consumed with this, watching it around the clock, driving themselves crazy with fear. And this thing feeds on fear. The enemy brings fear into the lives of the believer and the non-believer. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear paralyzes effort. Fear will break down your immune system according to the medical Amen. profession. Fear will give you heart trouble, will give you high blood pressure. Fear will take away your sleep at night. Fear will take away your faith and fear will destroy you if you allow it to. And I've come to speak to you this morning about the challenge to be strong and of a good courage. Amen. God told uh, Joshua four times in the chapter one of uh, jo Joshua, for four distinct reasons to be strong and of a good courage. And I want us to look at those four reasons today and see how they apply to our lives. And for a little background, if you look at our story over in Deuteronomy, you'll find in Deuteronomy chapter 31, Moses says, I'm 120 years old. Verse 1. And let's look at this. It's Moses spake these words of all Israel. He said unto them, I am 120 years old. I can no more go out or come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee. He will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og and to the kings of the Amorites and unto the land of them whom he hath destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face that you may do unto them according to all the commandments which I command you. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Listen to me. Moses takes Joshua in the sight of three million people, and he's placing his hands on Joshua, and he's saying, more or less, Joshua, I'm placing some of my authority on you. Joshua, I'm placing some of my dignity on you. Joshua, I'm placing some of my anointing on you. What's Moses doing? He's passing the mantle to Joshua. Let me tell you, if you read about Joshua, after the death of Joshua, the people didn't follow the God of Moses. Why? Because Joshua failed to pass the mantle like Moses passed the mantle to Joshua. Now here Joshua's getting the mantle passed to him. Let me tell you something. Jesus, much similar to this, when he fed the 5,000, he took five loaves and two fishes, and he put them in his hands, and he held them up to the sky, and he blessed them. And those ordinary fishes and bread now became supernatural. Now those fishes and bread fed me thinking around 12,000 people, counting the women and children. Let me tell you something, friend. You might think you're all ordinary, Brother Ham, or Brother Joe, or Brother Brother Jim, but let me tell you, when you get in the hands of God, when God anoints you, Come when on. God calls you out, you're no longer old ordinary brother so-and-so. When he puts his hands on you, you become supernatural. When he fills you with the Holy Ghost, Amen. you 
day when God puts his hands on you, you're no longer the same. You're a new creature. You're no longer ordinary. You're no longer natural, but you're supernatural. And let me tell you, no weapon formed against a child of God can prosper. Amen. Can you say amen to Jesus and hands on the praise? After the death of Moses, it says over in Joshua 1, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now thou therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all the people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel, and every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from this wilderness and from Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for inheritance the land. Let me tell you something. Firstly, he tells Joshua, I want you to be strong for the people's sake, Joshua. We listen, leaders, Christian people. You're a leader in your own right. If you're not a minister, we're all able ministers of the New Testament. People are looking for answers. Weaker Christians are looking for answers. The world is looking for answers. They need people that can rise up in this last day. They need people that can rise up in a state of confusion. Listen, right now, Israel is in turmoil. Their great leader is dead. It's a national disaster. Much like right now, it's a worldwide pandemic with this corona. But let me tell you something. I see Jesus standing at your Father's right hand. Come Isaiah on. said in the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Let me tell you something. God is able, and people need strong leadership. They got their mind together, and got their life together, and got their walk together, and they're not all up and down, in and out, but they're ready to serve God. I tell you, if you run with the footmen, Jeremiah said, and they weary you, how will you contend with horses? It's a day that you and I need to shine. He said to Joshua, the same promise he's given us today, every place that the sole of your foot does step upon, that have I given unto you. Let's go out and possess the land for God. Let's rise up and win the world for Jesus Christ. We're living in the greatest time the world has ever known. We're ushering in the coming of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We got the message the world's looking for. Don't be fearful, but be strong and have a good courage. Can you say amen and give Jesus a hand? Now I'm going to share something with you. And a lot of people say, you know, if God wants me to be a strong and courageous leader, he knows my address. Let me tell you, it doesn't work like that. What was God telling Joshua? What did it contain? Strong and of a good courage. Firstly, definition for strong, listen to this. Be firm, Joshua. Be secure, Joshua. Be brawny, be rugged, be stout-hearted. Sustain, Joshua. Support, Joshua, be a support. Be effective, Joshua. Be efficient, Joshua. Be tenacious, Joshua. Have a great deal of power, Joshua. That's what strong means. We have a great deal of power. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got angels on our behalf to help us and to work for us. we got God Almighty. And if God will be for you, who can be against you? Can you say amen? Secondly, he says, be courageous, Joshua. What does that entail? Not deterred by danger. Brave. Dauntless. Fearless, gallant, gutsy, heroic, lion-hearted, valiant, tough. Be game, Joshua. Be established. He's telling Joshua, I'm going to back you up. The host of heaven will be at your disposal. I'll give you the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll be with you. My promise of my spirit. What a better promise can you be? He said, I will be with you to know that God is with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. What a promise to know God is with us and living inside of us and all around us. The angels of the Lord, they yeah. can't round about them. Up with 
The disciples came to the Lord. The Lord told them, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood if you're going to be my disciple. He was saying, you got to eat, sleep, and drink me. That's what it's coming down to, Christians. God separated the wheat from the tares, the goats from the sheep. You got to eat, sleep, and drink Jesus. And then he said to Peter and the disciples, will you also walk away? And Peter said, Lord, where can we go? Only you have the words of eternal life. Yeah. It's of your benefit to serve God. Where can you go? No one else can say, I shall supply all your need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No one else can write your name in the Lamb's book of life and wash away all your sins. Give him a hand clap of praise. You know, we came through tough times, our people. A lot of people don't know this, and some have never admitted, but if you look at the history of Rumbichel, our people was in slavery. Our people, like the black people, was in slavery. They used to hunt our people, and I can show you the photographs. They'd hang men, women, and children up in the trees like you would deer. They bagged two men today, one woman, a couple of children. And our people came through hard times. And a lot of people nowadays, they got money and they're blessed and they won't ever admit the hard times. You know, I remember times when we didn't have gas in the car, in the truck, to go to work. We had to walk a ladder down the road, clean some gutters for $20, to bring the $20 back so we could put gas in the truck and now start the day's work. Amen. I remember, you know why everybody all the time when people let boiled pudding and boiled meat and boiled bacon puddings and all that, they didn't have ovens, that's why. They had to boil everything over a, a fire. They had a pot of fire. You know, I remember my Aunt Mary Grant was the camp doctor. Nobody would go to doctors. Nobody could afford a doctor. So she would say, you know, I'm getting old now. I'm a great-grandfather now. Some of you will remember some of this stuff. The old travel remedies. If you got a boil, Aunt Mary would make a poultice, a bread poultice, put that on you. That took care of that. If you had a bad cold and your chest all clogged up, she'd make a mustard plaster and put that on you. <laughs> she'd butterfly it. She'd stitch you up butterfly. They give you all different things. Our people came through tough times. And let me tell you something. We can make you much more today because we got God on our side today. You and I got Jesus. A lot of us never had the Lord. Some believed in God. But a lot of us never were saved and was born again. But we made it through tough times before. And I've come to tell you the God that delivered David from the paw of the lion and the God that delivered him from the paw of the bear, he will deliver us from this Philistine as well. In Jesus' name, give him a hand clap of prayer. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalm 37 and 25, I have been young. Now, when I tell my grandbaby who thought I was young once and had a lovely head of hair and was a handsome man at one time, you never believe that. They don't believe it. But I was young once, the psalmist said. But now I'm old. I'm a great grandfather now. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or God's seed begging for bread. What a promise. Amen. What a promise. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or God's seed begging for bread. The psalmist said, when my mother and father will fail me, the Lord will lift me up. I thank God for God today. Can you say amen? I thank God for Jesus. Be strong for your own sake. Give the Lord a hand clap of bread. You know, it's all in your attitude. Many people, negative all the jobs is done. The economy's going under. We're going under. Let me tell you, they built the Empire State Building in the middle of the Great Depression. We're not going under. Amen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. Come on, give me my hand clap of praise in the name of Jesus. I told you many times I'm getting old now, two shoe salesmen were sent to Africa. There were no phones, they wired back. The first one wired back and said, send me a ticket home on the boat. Nobody wears shoes here. The other one wired back and said, send me more shoes. Everybody's a customer. It's all in how you look at it. People will get wealthy in this corona. A lot of people are going to get wealthy. Watch and see. A lot of people are going to make a lot of money. But it's all in how you look at it. 
Let me tell you something. If God be for us, who can be against us? Thirdly, he said, Joshua, I want you to be strong and courageous for the Lord's sake. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. If there was ever a reason, Christian, to be strong and courageous, it says here. You know, Jesus Christ, he didn't go halfway up Calvary's hill and turn around and say, it's too hard. I quit. He went all the way for you and me. Amen. He went all the way, despising the shame. He went to the cross of Calvary, stripped before the world, nailed to a cross, bearing your sin and mine, the sins of the world. These scholars believe that's why God darkened the world for that period of time, because the sins of the world was placed upon him, and the Father couldn't bear to look at his perfect son, bearing the sins of the world. He that knew no sin became sin, that you might be the righteousness of God. And I'll tell you what, he didn't go halfway. He didn't give up. He died on the cross of Calvary for your sins, and he would have done it if it was only one person. But he died for the world, the worst man in the world, and the best man in the world. He died for the world. How much more should you and I, for the Lord's sake, stand up in the last days and be counted among the faithful? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. Wherever you go, he said, I'm going to be with you. Man, that's powerful. I know of a friend of mine. We've been living on a campground and boy beat him up every day. So he went and got his big brother. He was about maybe 11 or 12. His brother was 16. And he said, you keep beating me up. And his brother said, I'm going with you today. He ain't going to beat you up today. His brother walked him over to the bully. He said, now we got to fight him again. They went in, getting ready to fight, and the boy turned around the bully and ran. He wasn't afraid of the little boy beat all the time. He was afraid of his big brother. Yes, Lord. Let me tell you, we've got a big brother yes. named Jesus Christ. He said, I'll go with you wherever you go. I'll be with you. With a promise, God says, I will be with you even to the ends of the earth. Let me tell you something. What a promise. What a God. And you and I have his presence. How much more should we serve him? How much more should we work for him? We're getting in the final hours. We're in the final countdown. We can't quit now. We can't turn around now. I want to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come and I'll make you a ruler over many. Give him a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4.16, 17 had my first answer when he stood before the judges. No man stood with me, but all men forsook me. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Isn't that good to know? Amen. When no one else can be there. You know, it isn't that when my mother and father forsake me that a mother and father more than likely would never forsake me, but there's times when they couldn't be there. Only God can be there. Amen. And God said, I'll never forsake Thank you. Jesus. I'll be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Romans 8, 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? So let's press on till we hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You know, Admiral Nelson in the English see battling against the French. He was a one-eyed admiral, and the French had an outnumbered French Navy, and they flew the flag for Admiral Nelson to surrender. And his second in command came to Admiral Nelson, and he said, Admiral, you see the flag, they're telling us to surrender. We're outnumbered, looks like we're beat. And Admiral Nelson took his telescope and put it to his blind eye. And he said, I see no flag to surrender. And Admiral Nelson defeated the French that day because he wouldn't give up. Never give up, never give in. Amen. Keep on keeping on all the way to the end of the line. Blessed persistence will win the day. God will make a way. Hang in there. 
and give Jesus a head clap of praise in Jesus' name. And the last reason he says, and I'm stopping, found in verse 18, Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not, will not hearken unto thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death, only be strong and of a good courage. You know, he said, Joshua, there's going to be times when the enemies are going to come against you. There's going to be times when rebels rise up against your authority. And he said, Joshua, in that time, you're going to have to be strong and of a good courage. You can't quit, Joshua. Listen, it's rebels that terrorize pastors and churches. I heard of a guy one time, this fella came to this pastor who was a good, faithful pastor. He seemed like he was doing a great job. He, he believed in, you know, wholeheartedly serving the Lord. He was giving his best. And the guy came, one person came to him in a nice-sized church and said, we've decided we don't want you to be the pastor anymore. And the pastor was crushed. He went home that day and brokenhearted. He said, man, I thought I'm doing a good job. I've given my life to this church and the work of God. And he said, they don't want me to be the pastor anymore. He went home, he started praying, and God said to him, listen, pastor, when you get to service Sunday morning, so I want you to stand up and ask the people, everybody that is with you, stand with you. And stand up in the meeting to let us know you're standing with me. You think I should be the pastor because it's been told me that you don't want me to be the pastor anymore. And he said that the whole church stood up to their feet and clapped and applauded, wanting him to stay as a pastor. And one man slithered out the back door like a snake that he was. It was only one person. I had a pastor friend of mine say he had one guy come against him. He called me on the phone, and he was, uh, you know, one of our ministers. He said, I'm quitting the church. This guy's attacked me. I said, how many people was attacked? He said, one guy. I said, man, your post. Don't let one person run you out of town. You've been called to do a job for God. But let me tell you something. It's kind of like a story I heard. This man had a lot of frogs croaking in a swamp behind his house. And so, he, some people approached him that sold frogs for frog legs for food. And they said, you've got so many frogs croaking in your swamp in the back. We want to make you a deal. We want to buy all your frogs. We'll, we'll catch them all and we'll sell them all and we'll pay you for the frogs. He said, good enough. And it was croaking like thousands for hours. Or you ever hear frogs croak? Make a lot of noise. He said, the next day they came to him and they paid him like $2. They said, we, we went through your whole swamp. There's no more croaking. We got three frogs. And you know, this, that's the way it is today. We got three frogs croaking, making a lot of noise. And the rest of the world is listening like it's thousands of frogs. You and I need to stand up and hear, let our voice be heard. Amen. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got the answer. The, we're not the quacks. They're the quacks. The left is the quacks. They're trying to tell us that, listen, how that you can choose your own uh, 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 gender and you can gaze to get married and all this stuff. And the word of God says that you and I are to live by his precepts. And they're croaking loud. And it's a small percentage. If God's people who were called by his name will stand up and be counted among the faithful and speak the gospel and tell the truth that the sinners must repent and give their heart to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, the rebels will either get saved or they'll run. But let me tell you, you and I have the answer the world is looking for. Give me my hand, God. You know, the last thing I want to mention here. One person in the book of Joshua in the Bible that wasn't affected by what I call the curse of casualness was Caleb. And I want to read a little bit about Caleb, and I want to close with this thought. Over in Joshua 14, Caleb, I want to put you in the story. Children of Israel has wandered for 40 years. Now they've crossed the river Jordan finally. And Caleb was one of the good spies. Him and Joshua were the two out of the 12 that brought back a good report. And they crossed the river Jordan. And Caleb says, listen, I'm 
85 years old now. And he said, I'm just as strong as I was when Moses promised me this mountain. Mount Horeb. 40 years ago when I was 45, I'm just as strong now as I was then. I'm just as courageous now as I was then. What was he saying? I'm just as firm now. I'm just as secure now. I'm just as broader now. I'm just as stout-hearted now. I'm just as sustained now. I'm just as effective now. I'm just as efficient now. I'm just as tenacious. And I have great power and courageous. I am not deterred by danger. I am just as brave. I'm just as thoughtless. I'm just as fearless. I'm just as delicate. I'm just as gutsy. I'm just as heroic. I'm just as lion-hearted. I'm just as valiant. I'm just as tough. I'm just as established as I was 40 years ago. And I'm going on by the grace of Almighty God. Give him a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. And he said to Joshua, Amen. Give me this mountain. Yes, Lord. That Moses promised me 40 years ago. Yes, Lord. And listen. <laughs> you know, when you feed, when you defeat the bear, there's a lion. When you defeat the lion, there's a Goliath. It's never ending. We'll beat the corona, it'll be something else. Amen. But we'll beat it too. Because our God's got the devil on a piece of strength. Yes, he does. And there's nothing too hard for our God to Amen. do. And you know, he had a mountain. Mount Horeb was overtaken by the Anax, the descendants of Goliath. There was three giants there. And he had spied that land out sneakily 40 years before. And he seen giant houses that the giants could have to go underneath the giant doors. And giant beds. And he said, I want that giant bed. And he said, I want that giant house. And I want that giant grapevines. And I want this giant bathtub. And I want all the giant stuff. And the Bible tells us that you look it up for yourself over in chapter 15 and verse 14. And Caleb drove thence to three sons of Anak, Sheshai, Ahaman, and Tamar, the children of Anak, the 85 years old Jewish History says that Caleb, 85 years old, with eyes blazing and gray hair blowing in the wind, went up Mount Horn and drove off the giant. Why? Men can't drive out giants, but when they're anointed by God, He can drive out the giants in your life, in your family, in this world. Can you say amen in the name of Jesus Christ? Don't give up. Be strong. Have a good courage. For you and I are giant killers. Amen. You are more than able. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil beat you up and let the frogs croak and bully you. But stand up and know that God is on our side. Amen. Have a good day. Be strong and courageous. This too will pass. And at the end of it all, hallelujah to God. Let's be busy about the Lord's work in spite of the churches being closed down. We can still work on the internet. We can still work at the gas station. We can still work wherever we can. Winning souls Amen. for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Listen, this morning, if you're not saved, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, you can't have the strength and courage without Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to pray with me. If you want that strength and courage, you need Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. I want you to bow your heads and pray with me. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. I repent. I turn from, I turn from my, sins. my sins. I turn to Jesus. I turn to Jesus. I accept him. I accept him. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. From this day on. From this day on. I'll live for you. I'll live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray for the believers. Father, strengthen. Encourage the believers today. Lift them up, God. We are able, Lord God. We're not going under. We're not going out, Lord. I don't read nowhere in the Bible where it says the church of Jesus Christ goes out with a whimper, but it says in Revelation 7, there stood a multitude before the throne of God that no man could number in white robes of every nation, of every tribe, and every tongue. Lord, we're not going under. The 
the army of the Lord has never been defeated. God's flag has never touched the ground. Go with us and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name.